and songwriter, we had the opportunity to talk to Tank of Tank and the Bangas. Tank talked about growing up in New Orleans in a musical family. Her sisters sing, her dad sings. She was in the church choir, always in choir and chorus in school. She talked about meeting her band at an open mic night in New Orleans. She talked about their first record, Think Tank, touring the album relentlessly for years and years and years, winning a contest and being able to perform on NPR's Tiny Desk Concert. She's actually done that twice. She talks about that, talks about being on Jimmy Fallon, Stephen Colbert, their record Green Balloon being nominated for a Grammy, writing and recording Friend Goals, their latest EP during quarantine, and the new music she's been working on. Make sure to check out our past interviews. They're up now on our Facebook page and YouTube channel at Bringing It Backwards, and follow us on Instagram and Twitter at Bringing Back Pod. We'd appreciate your support if you follow and subscribe to our podcast wherever you listen to podcasts. We're bringing it backwards with Tank and the Bangas. Our podcast is about your journey in music and how you got to where you are now. And we'll talk about uh, the most recent uh, EP and, you know, the records prior to that. If that's cool with you. Yes, it is. <laughs> awesome. Yes. Very cool. So the, the band formed in North uh, New Orleans, right? Or is that where you're? I was about to say North. What? <laughs> no, New Orleans. <laughs> yes, uh, formed in New Orleans at a open mic night. Really? Are you originally yes. from there? I am originally from New Orleans. There is no other place to originally be from. Okay. Okay. So and then, well, before we get into the band starting, how did you get into music? How did I get into music? Uh, well, you know, I mean, growing up with the radio was great because. You would stop and record the songs and stop so you could hear them and write down the lyrics. Man, it's such an organic time to be brought up in when the radio was truly a friend. Mm -hmm. um, and definitely having a dad that could sing, sisters that could sing, always in church, you know? So church, sisters, radio. And your dad. And my dad. <laughs> That's awesome. So always a singer then. Do you play an Yeah, instrument? not a good singer though, but a singer. Uh, I think, are you saying you're not a good singer now or you're saying that oh, I'm you a, weren't I'm yeah, a good you, singer now? No, you're as good as What are you though. talking about? No, I had to work I had to work on it. I had okay. to work on it. Yes. Okay, very cool. So I uh, but do you play an instrument as well or just, was it always just vocals? Always vocals, like trying to work on the the thurman right now, but uh haven't touched it and you know like, you know, a while sure okay oh wow so i use my voice uh really like an instrument it, it could do everything the instruments do mm -hmm. i really wish i could just sit down at some keys and just just magically play the songs i love but man it take patience and i be short on patience a lot <laughs> for sure well aside from singing in church were you like in the chorus choir or like chorus always in the like choir that? at always in a choir at school loved choir okay. choir nerd um from middle school to high school for sure okay and then were those kind of your first performances in front of people aside from church hmm. yeah okay. yeah sure mm -hmm. high school very cool were you in a band at all not in band uh band uh unlike a lot of movies like band nerds and band geeks band was really cool in the south Okay. Um, especially in New Orleans, like it's a big thing to be in a band. You could, be, especially if you're the drum major, like mm. you, you got all the ladies, you know. Oh, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, it's cool to be in a band in New Orleans. Like it's, it's hot. It's a sexy. Sure. Thing. Were yeah. you in like a like a band with you know peers of yours, like that would play out around? I wasn't in the band. I was the choir nerd. Oh, but like in a band aside from the school band, like did you join with friends and? I had a group, I had a singing group when I was young. Okay. Yeah, and I don't think we ever called ourselves anything particular, but uh, <laughs> I remember the, I remember the, what do they call it? Um, the choreography of some okay. of the songs. That's cool, <laughs> very cool. And then, <laughs> <laughs> so, how, so how did you meet the rest of the band? You said it was at an open mic night where you just singing on cappella? They had one of the members, one of the original members of the band that used to always want me to come to this open mic night. Mm -hmm. And I kept saying, I'm going to come, I'm going to come. But I never came because I was so focused on the open mic that I was at, which was focusing on poetry. Then oh, I went to a different one and they focused on music. And um, 
one by one, I just met the bangers at different times. And it was just, it was, it was magic, you know, when we were up there. That's what made us want to tour and see if, you know, if it was contagious, if everybody was digging what we was digging. Sure, sure. So once you guys started the band, what, what year was that? What year was that? Uh, what year did we start the band? Was it 2000 and... Yeah. 2000, 2010. Oh, okay. 11. And then, okay. so right away, you guys, well, you said you wanted to tour. So was that something that you guys got together right away? Or, you know, obviously you had to write the songs and play out locally. Before I met the band, I had an album. So I already had oh. a couple of songs. And we were just like working out these three, four songs that I had wrote constantly and rearranging them for years because they was all I had. So they, oh. I mean, it would get pretty fun though because when we get tired of a song, they would rearrange it so cool. And everybody would always say, you never go to two Tank and the Banger shows and they're the same. They just aren't. They just, uh -huh. that was always really cool, refreshing. Yeah, that is cool. That is really cool. And then tell me about uh, putting out the first record, Think, Think Tank. Think Tank. Uh, Think Tank was uh, so rushed towards the end. Uh, it was crazy because I managed because we kept, what's the word? Um, we kept procrastinating and oh, like sure. moving our feet really slowly on like finishing out stuff. And then one day she was like, yeah, the album is due December 10th. That's the, uh, that's the album release party. We was like, huh? Ain't no <laughs> album. So we had to, I mean, we was up to like three o'clock in the morning trying to bam it out and and it's so crazy because, you know, certain musicians, of course, in our group, is like, man, it's not right. It's not right. But the public, they they still love it to this day. Mm -hmm. so that's cool. Just, like that's, You don't have funny. to be perfect, you know? Yeah. It's funny that you say you procrastinated because it's not like it's a short record. I mean, you have 15 songs on the album. <laughs> <laughs> it wasn't like, okay, we got uh, nine. Let's yeah, it wasn't and like, let's, <laughs> let's like smash the peanut butter and jelly together and you're done. But it was right. a process to... Uh, finish it because we'll write a lot of things but you know like the finishing touches mm -hmm. like i can't stand the mix and mastering part of everything oh sure okay it. it's so long <laughs> i hate it well with that record were you guys able to tour after that like you said you had an album out on yourself but were you able to tour on think tank yes we just combined right. random me and think tank together and we toured off of it for years how tell me yes. about that what was the first tours like oh my god sleeping on people floor uh everybody sleeping in wrong room the 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 tour van just sitting on ice coolers sitting on laps 20 plus hour drives to new york for oh. one show that was probably only paying like two or three hundred dollars <laughs> uh getting out the van driving up gorilla style taking out all our instruments playing in front of apollo until the police came oh wow like, that's uh, dope <laughs> it was a lot we even toured with uh think tank when we lived in london and um and just getting all these random festivals. It was a lot easier to do festivals in London than it is in the United States. You could sometimes you could just get on one. Not like Glastonbury or anything, but some of them, the local ones, you could just get on them if you know you talk to people. So oh, but um, really? yeah, it was an amazing because we did like Brixton Splash, which was so cool and so ghetto. I loved it. And uh <laughs> and I had another one um that we did for a, a young boy, I believe, that that passed away. So um it was a great experience. We kept that album alive as long as we could. And the moment we got tired of it, that's when we knew, okay, it's time to do some new music. Okay, yeah, I was gonna ask you about that because there's quite a few years in between uh, oh, yeah. Moon and, and Think Tank. You said you guys, did the whole band move out to, to London? The core moved out with one background singer, which is Jelly. Uh, okay. We couldn't bring everybody. So um, we brought the core out and we did a lot of open mics. We okay. bought an 18 year old Japanese van. It broke a lot. <laughs> <laughs> no, <laughs> that's crazy. So, was there a reason why you guys decided to move out there or just thought it would be easier to get around and tour? Well, number one, we thought that our music is kind of interesting, it's kind of different. Sure. And we thought that, you know, the UK would understand us and accept us more. Mm -hmm. And number two, I mean, they speak English. Sure. <laughs> That's probably a good uh, <laughs> Yeah, you know. Good place so, uh, to start. 
That's amazing. Well, I mean, you guys have like in, just on that first record. I mean, wow, you guys accomplished so much. You were able to play like NPR Tiny Desk concert. Like, how did all that kind of happen? We was it just off word of mouth and the buzz of that record? Uh, what happened was that we filled out for the contest, and oh. we um, yeah, and and because we were procrastinating, our manager had to move in again and literally say, "Okay, now on Thursday, on let's just put out a date and say September 17th, we're gonna be at this Clark High School, and we're gonna um do this one song." It's like she had to set it up like it was a gig, just for <laughs> us to you know like get on board get together and be there at the same time, you know, yeah. yeah. So we went to this classroom. We did was gonna do this song from Think Tank called Old Heart. Cause when I think of Tiny Desk, I'm like, oh, it's gotta be acoustic and nice. It's sure. gonna be the one that's gonna go well. And then uh, the MD at the time, Joshua, just changed the song last minute. Was like, let's do quick. And I'm like, you sure? That song kind of big for no like big instruments. You know, we we behind the desk. And he was like, yeah, did it first time like that. Crazy, felt good, went a little viral. Mm -hmm. uh, unanimous decision for us all to win out of 6,000 contestants and I've been a judge for Tiny Desk it's not easy so um, to win that was like winning the lottery you know it's like yeah, all these wow. people in the world trying out for this one which I played the lottery last week and it was not fun I will never pay the lottery again by the <laughs> oh, way. the one billion dollar um, one? yes I mean it was a billion I had to do it Same it here. was a billion dollars I had to try <laughs> my wife's but, like um, here's a 20 so just get 10 number like 10 tickets no I spent I was like here's a hundred <laughs> I thought that was gonna like open up my chances and I won and I won four dollars and I'm very upset and but I, you what? And at I least you got four me. bucks. I mean, that's at fun. least I got four. <laughs> but you yeah, won. At least. <laughs> but I'll you never came play back again. and said to you, okay, you look, I'll never play again. ticket, right? <laughs> and guess, and I bet this old man won in front of me because look what he told me after I bought all the tickets. You only need one. <laughs> 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 did you buy, did but it, I, wanted from, to, um, I wanted to make my chances big and I never Michigan really played before, but yeah. I'll never play again. Well, I mean, out of a billion dollars, you gotta, you gotta just see what, you know, you gotta take your chance. You, you gotta, I mean, it's a billion dollars. I was counting what I was going to do with the money already. My mom already <laughs> like, had three houses. <laughs> yes. My mom already had three houses. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. <laughs> but, but just to tie it all in, winning Tiny Desk was like winning the lottery because everybody mm -hmm. else was, everybody was trying to get it. And it's like just picking up this winning number and you, you happen to get it. So, um, it was just so absolutely amazing. Uh, I was very nervous, extremely nervous. All my mess ups, people actually like think are on purpose and they sing them along like they are. I think that's mm -hmm. so cute. That's cool. And, um, it was really cute because it's, I remember a poem Nikki Giovanni said, she said, even my errors are correct. You know, <laughs> uh, so that that's so funny. And um, it was really touching. And Bob Boylan told me it would change our lives. And I was mm -hmm. just like, what are you talking about? Okay, Bob. He kept saying it and it did like that next year we were Grammy nominated. Yeah, that's huge. So the next year were you guys obviously at that point, were you working on what became Green Balloon? Yes, we were. And we were touring nonstop. It was a, oh my gosh, we were, we were everywhere. And um, it was, it was a great year. We were everywhere. I just couldn't believe that we were going all these places and that these places wanted us there and we were going to be booked until the end of the year. It was we 2020 stopped touring. We were still touring off wow. of just buzz and love. Uh -huh. And the fact that if I do say so myself in an amazing live show. Sure. <laughs> I've seen your guys' videos. I watched the Tiny Desk <laughs> concert. Yeah. Absolutely. It's nothing like being there. It's a it's an incredible energy on stage that um I don't know if you saw the that Disney movie Soul yet. Oh yeah. My son like you, loves you that. know that zone he about that he was talking times. about. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, it's real. Yeah. It's a moment where it just feels incredibly spiritual and like you're up here and, you're pr and you just want to praise God. It, that, that moment, that space is actually real. Mm -hmm. yeah, yeah. That, I, yeah, that's amazing. And with, that, with the Tiny Ass concert, you were able to do it again, right? With the stay at home? I did do a stay at home one. If I could do How it all over that? again, that's Lord, cool. I would have did it right with my band members. But uh, Bob wanted me to do it alone. And it was very scary, even more scared, just as scary as Tiny Desk, because I was just learning how to use the all the stuff on my iPad. So oh, sure. I didn't know what I was, I didn't, I didn't know what the hell I was doing. And if I could do it all over again, I would have prepared myself just a little bit more. 
But that's awesome that you you were able to you were asked back. Obviously, you had an impact on them. You know. Oh, for sure. That's really cool. Yeah. And I want to hear about this Grammy nomination. That must have been such a massive <laughs> moment for you. Oh my gosh, I'm probably one of the only people in the world that did not want to win the Grammy when they was calling our names. <laughs> Why is that? I was just too scared. I wasn't ready to accept. No. I, I'm not somebody that, you know, um, regularly deals with anxiety, but uh -huh. all that anxiety was all in the back of my neck and you know, on my head, my back, and I was high. My heart was beating real fast and I couldn't breathe. And they were saying, Billy Eilish, Lizzo, um, sure. that boy. And they was calling everybody name. And I was like, and I was thinking, please don't call our name. Please don't call our name. Please don't call our name. <laughs> and they didn't. And I went, yes, yes, yes. <laughs> we God. didn't win. <laughs> they thought I was clapping for Billy Eilish. I was clapping for myself. I was so happy I didn't have to walk up there because I would have fell out. Yeah, I wasn't ready. <laughs> did you have a speech prepared or no you're just gonna wing it i did i, I wrote a little speech i wrote okay. a little i mean you gotta write a speech because i mean you gotta write a speech right right I mean, if you win no what matter you what do? You go up there you're no like no matter uh. what <laughs> yeah you don't want to do that so yeah I, sure. I wrote a little speech very cool so that was a big record for you um well speaking of the pandemic you, you guys said you're touring all the way up until there and you right. just you had released uh a record in the fall the the ep that you guys put out was that something that you were working on friend goals was that something you were working on in 2019 or was that started after the pandemic had hit <laughs> that was started right after the pandemic hit okay so you guys are touring tell me where you were when everything shut down i was in some city i don't even know i just remember that there was we were on tour opening up for the revivalists in these beautiful arenas. Wow. It was really beautiful. I was like, oh man, this is this is really beautiful. It was an interesting uh, combination too because their fans were not our fans and our fans were not their friends. So mm -hmm. to, for these people to uh, come together, I think it was uh, I think it was important. Yeah, and, that's um, rad. And they were really, like on their peak too at that point, right? I mean it was a great, it was songs. a great time. Yeah. And I don't remember what city we was in, but I remember they kept having talks about. They may cancel the tour. They may cancel it, y'all. We was thinking, they're not going to cancel no tour. Mm -hmm. And then I remember I was outside um, the venue, well, inside the venue, selling merch. And a woman came up to me and hugged me like I was the Lord. She hugged me that tight. And that's when I knew this tour has to stop. <laughs> oh, yeah. I feel like... I can't be hugging all and those people. And I was people. like, it's out there, lady. Are you crazy? <laughs> hugging me like this. <laughs> uh, Other than that, I was like, man, they're not going to take out the tour, man. The fans all the way over here. We up here, man. It's all good. But the moment that woman hugged me, I said, baby, this is, this is not out. right. <laughs> this is not of right. Of course, I wasn't the determining factor to <laughs> stopping tour, but that just happened to be the last city for everybody. Uh -huh. And did, um, it was yeah, it was right. It was right to do. Sure. Did you notice? Because <laughs> yeah, like, fans don't care about dying sometimes. I was gonna ask. Did you notice? Like, I've talked to other artists that, were, that have said, like, you know, they they kind of they would show up to a show towards the end there, and it would be a sold out show, and there would be you know half two thirds of the room filled because people were getting scared. Did you notice that at all, or was it still no? Packed? The rooms were still um, full. Okay. The rooms were still full. Yeah. All right. And then so once the pandemic hits, everyone's stuck inside. Are you at this mm -hmm. point, when do you guys start writing uh, friend goals? We start writing friend goals, I would probably say maybe a month into being at home. Oh, OK. Wow. Yeah. Was that weird doing like did you have to do it over like Zoom calls and all that? Yeah, we had to mix um, over Zoom call. And mm -hmm. since one of our members actually caught COVID, we oh. had to start like writing songs with him through, you know, just email and stuff. You know, he mm -hmm. quarantined pretty long, but um, we was able to do music videos and write songs and write other songs too, mm -hmm. for like um, NPR and other stuff and do a bunch of lives. So, you know, some bands, needed time to create and and we were one of them for sure mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you guys were yeah able to have some because you're constantly touring right i mean at that point right you wouldn't have had, and, had and time I don't to sit down and write a record <laughs> it's, i mean it's possible because we did it for green balloon we were touring mm -hmm. we'll go home for a day or two and then we're straight out to california 
you know, to go to write the album. So it's very possible. But as far as getting off stage and let's go in one of the band members' room and write a song, that's not really going to happen. Okay. Yeah. So you guys, because you toured hard, obviously, on Think Tank. And was that, I'm sure that was still the plan for Green Balloon. You just had you got nominated for a Grammy. You're opening up for Revivalist. Was there- yeah, we still were. Yeah, we were touring. I'm sure we never you stopped. Have a pretty book schedule, right? In 2020. Yes, yeah, supposed to be in Europe and everything. We was going to. We started going to Europe every summer. I started even getting tired of going to Europe. It wasn't <laughs> until it was like taken away from me that I was like, huh? <laughs> right. Huh? You know. Um, <laughs> You really appreciate things when somebody like forcibly take your toy away, you know, because I was and it's not that I it's not that I didn't like Europe. It's just that I was missing major festivals in New Orleans mm-hmm. and, I, and I missed them. I missed Essence Festival. And, you know, sometimes you miss Mardi Gras mm-hmm. and stuff like that. Mm-hmm. Well, with uh, was it also strange, I'm sure. With with the regimen of like record tour, record tour and the amount of touring you guys do, putting out friend goals and not being able to play them for people as far as in a live setting. Was that a that must have been an interesting hurdle? Um, it's 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 interesting. I just know that once life returns, that we're going to be able to perform these songs and and I'm going to be and I'm going to be just fine with that. You know, when life returns, that's what I want mm-hmm. when when life returns, that I'll be able to. Yeah, to tour and perform them because you know, yeah. And you got you said you're you're doing some live sessions and stuff like on like Instagram and stuff or oh always. But we did uh, just do a big show recently, like a live Fringo show, and we're going to be showing pieces of that online uh, for the people that you know weren't be able to see it. And it was pretty cool. We had almost everybody there, so that was dope. That is cool. And you guys also were able to do uh, the Stephen Colbert one, right? Late show for his stay at home, play at home. Yeah, I did that with the Soul Rebels, I believe. Yeah. Tell me about that. That was that was cool. I would have wished that that was at the actual station for sure. Okay. Were you together with everybody or were you like? Yes, I was together. You know, every time you're not as as artists, you know, they want you to wear your mask if you're not performing. Sure. Period. So, right. you know, to be amongst your friends and have to, you know, have on your mask or only take it off when you're singing, it gets annoying. Your mouth gets super dry. And, um, you know, you want to you want love on people that you've been loving on for years. Right. And of course, if you're doing something like the Cobor show, you want to be there. Yeah. Are you just are you just at home? <laughs> have you had you're a just chance? At home? Yeah. Was that your chance? First chance to play like a a. A, like a live television event like that like a late show um no we did jimmy fallon oh how was that oh that was incredible i knew that i would meet jimmy fallon because i was like I, I kept speaking it for years the first time i did jimmy fallon i did it uh doing backgrounds with my uh with my friend nora jones Oh, and so that's huge. when it was <laughs> it was and i wasn't going to do it because i'm so scared of background work but mm-hmm. she loved me and my friends, uh, Jelly, um, uh, our, our relationship, our camaraderie and, uh, you know, our voices. So she was like, you know, do background for me for a couple of festivals. And, and so I, my friends convinced me to do it. So I did it and I'm happy I did. And then that's when the, the Jimmy Fallon came up. And uh, when I was there, I just knew that I would be there again with my band. I just knew it. And, and then sure when the that- moment came, it was like surreal. Yeah, I was going to say that was probably such a different feeling being out there like in the front instead of being, you know, in, as a backup singer. And yes, it was. And it, when I was I was incredibly nervous. What was more nerve wracking, that or the tiny desk? Are you going to ask me something like that? <laughs> you know, dang on well, I have no absolute answer. I'm trying to even think. <laughs> Nobody even asked me that before. Which one was no nerve? Let me think about it. Oh, I just have no answer. I just have no answer. You know what made me so nervous about Tiny Desk? I was hoarse. Oh. So I was scared vocally that I would sound messed up. What made sure. me nervous about Jimmy Fallon is I felt like the whole New Orleans was watching me and I knew they were. So I was like, I just, I gotta, you know, be good here. Cause I know my city is watching me. Everyone knows I'm here. Right, right, right. <laughs> well, with Tiny Desk, you don't, is it all just shot in like a live, like you go in and play, your 20 minute set or whatever, and that's it. You don't get to re retake songs. No, you don't. 
Yeah, it's you just, know, you just, you just, you just do, do it. it. You just right. do it. Okay, I was curious. Cause, Cause whereas you're on TV, it's obviously live. Oh, so I didn't know if it was different a little bit by by that regard, but it sounds like no, you just they just go, hear it, here you go, have fun. Yep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. That's scary too. That's really cool. Okay, well, uh, what do you guys you said you're writing new music right now? You're currently, you know, working on new stuff. I'm currently working on many new things. And as I'm creating this project right now, we're very excited about it. It's sounding dope, dope. It's really, really sounding cool. Um, I like, I like where this is going, and this is only like the first time I've recorded in this specific new Bangerville house, mm-hmm. and um, I think it's gonna be great. Very cool. I, I think can't it's gonna wait be to really hear, special. I can't wait to hear the new stuff you have coming Me out. Me too. And, and I can't wait for the world to open up again, so I can see you guys play here in San Diego. <laughs> Me too. <laughs> Jesus. Yeah, I know. Hopefully sooner Off with than the later. mask. When right. It's right. <laughs> <laughs> when it's right, though. <laughs> when it's right. I love yeah. that. <laughs> Thank you. Thanks so much for doing this. I appreciate you. And uh, Thank I, you, I, too. I have one more question before I let you go. I want to okay. know if you have any advice for aspiring artists. Whoa. Uh, it's that quote that I just love, you know, be yourself. Everybody else is taken. I love that. I love that. I haven't heard that quote before. That is a good it's one. such a good one. They really are taking though. Every everybody is taken, so you really gotta be yourself. <laughs> <laughs>